Hey, for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to recall S2P files on the VNA simulator, and then we're going to look at a way to actually load your S2P or SNP file, any number of ports, into the VNA simulator to use it as an active data or dummy data, as we call it. And you'll be able to do things like change frequencies and change power levels, I have bandwidth, and see how it affects your data. So let's get started. Okay, let's spin up the simulator and I'll show you how to recall some S2P files and even replace the dummy device under test with your own data. So let's uh, start my 50 gigahertz PNAX. And uh, here we see spinning up. And this is the default data. Later on, I'll show you how to replace that. We can see that's the default. It's that filter that we're not going to be using. So I'll hold it. And I'm just going to close this window so now we don't have any data. And now I'm going to go recall some data. And on the desktop, I put a folder with some S2P files. I'm going to recall the data of a, an amplifier. So there I can go and put some markers on the amplifier. We can look at the uh, value of the trace there. The S11 about minus 14 dB. Well, a couple markers on a channel so they all move together. And then I'll put markers on the other traces here, on the S21 trace in particular, 23 dB gain, and the S11 trace. Uh, click on the marker to activate it. And now if I want to, I can move those markers around. I can also make the readout large. Sometimes I do this if I just have uh, one screen or I'm projecting it. But for today, we're going to have uh, smaller markers. Now for this experiment, I chose to uh, show an amplifier that I measured as part of an experiment where we were looking at de-embedding and its effect on noise parameters. And so I measured the low noise amplifier by itself. And then I also did a measurement of the low noise, low noise amplifier plus a Beatty standard. And a Beatty standard gives us a very well-known reflection coefficient that uh, we can estimate what would happen to the noise figure if we put the Beatty standard on a well-known amplifier. And so in this experiment, I'm going to load up the low noise amplifier, which I just did. And then I'll separately load up the Beatty standard as an S2P file, and we can look at its effects. And then finally, I will use the combination measurement that I did of the Beatty standard plus the low noise amplifier uh, as a dummy device under test. And I'll so show you how you can modify the default conditions to get that uh, new kind of S2P file in as a dummy device. And then for some fun, we'll try de-embedding the Beatty standard S2P file from the dummy device that has the combination of the two and see how well that de-embedded low noise amplifier measurements match with the uh, measurements I did on the standalone low noise amplifier that I just recalled in the S2P file. So let's recall that data. We're going to pick up the Beatty S2P file. And here you can see we definitely have some mismatch in this file. Put a marker on it. And up above here I've put the equation that allows us to compute the S11 in dB according to the uh, impedance of the 25 ohm line. And so I can move the marker around. Here at the null, of course, it's almost perfectly matched. And look here, at the top, we're right at minus 4.44, 4.45. So this is definitely a nearly perfect 25 ohm line, maybe a little bit of loss as we go in higher frequencies. Now the problem with S2P files, of course, is you can't really change the frequencies. If you try to change the stop frequency, it doesn't change on the screen because that's really static data. You've just recalled it. And if you try and take a sweep, it'll go back and overwrite your data with the data from the dummy dot. And we really don't need that data. So we're going to go ahead and close this window. All right, that macro function uh, is going to be under these macro keys. Let's take a look at where we might find it in the NA help. If you just go in and type dummy uh, in the search and list topics, the first one is the simulator. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the simulator page, which talks more about the paid for options. But at the bottom, we'll see a uh, little description of the dummy dot. This is the device that's loaded automatically into the simulator and it gives us a way to manipulate your own S2P files as though they were live data. 
and there's a macro function that was created and it gets downloaded and shows up in the uh, utility macro dummy dot and so when I go and click on uh, it's actually macro on the hard key and or utility macro either one the first set of macro keys here at the bottom I see the dummy dot tool and I can load in my own device under test and for this one I'm gonna load in the combination of the Beatty amplifier plus or the Beatty standard plus the amplifier so let's load that up and I'll uh, close that okay let's uh, load a new channel we'll turn on channel one that was the channel of the window we closed drag the S11 trace over here there's no data yet because we haven't taken any data and now it's reading in that dummy dot data and I can change that to an S21 and again take a sweep and we can see that the S21 data has gain in it now we can move our marker over there and see that and we can change the frequencies start of 1 gigahertz stop of 12 gigahertz that covers the range that the data actually had in it and we zoom in and there we can add new traces all of our S parameter traces we can even add uh, power traces like A1 and uh, B2 traces and if we change the IF bandwidth to something wide like a 10 megahertz IF bandwidth we can see the noise here on that uh, purple trace the S22 trace change back to narrow bandwidth it doesn't show the noise while we're sweeping we can change the span so there I zoomed into 2 gigahertz and it does all the proper interpolation of the S2P file, magnitude and phase. Span back out again, and I like them to be over and under, so let me just drag this window over above the other window. And uh, now I can see this is the real data, or the data from the amplifier without the Beatty standard. They're both S2P file data. And this is the data with the Beatty standard connected in front of it. So for fun, we'll take the fixture, fixture setup, and I'll add a de-embedding block. And the de-embedding block can load from a file or from other things. But I'm going to load the Beatty standard. And I do want to be sure uh, to check it, say OK. And I'll apply the fixture. We can see the fixture shows up there. And now let's look at my S2, uh, or S21 data. It's identically matching the S21 data. So does the S11 data. And the nice thing about using the uh, dummy dot is I can do things like change the frequency even after I've done the de-embedding. So here I can go again and zoom into 5 megahertz or take it back out to the 11 megahertz span. Uh, I can also put the stop frequency much higher. But of course, I don't have any data higher. So if I use the marker, I can drag my marker over. All the markers are coupled, of course. And uh, we can see that the data is exactly flat. Uh, once we get past the end of the S2P file that was loaded. Now, if we want to get rid of this, we can go in and just clear the data, and that basically treats it like an open circuit. So it's open on port 1 and two, port 2, so there's 0 dB return loss. The S21 is just showing the noise floor. And if I go ahead and uh, preset, that's what it shows is just the cleared data. If I close this, let's close and restart then I haven't updated the default data so that's really what I've already loaded is more like a uh, one-time user data and as the analyzer spins up we see that original data from the uh, filter that comes by default now we can create a more permanent uh, user user defined default data by going to the macro key and here I'll load up that uh, amplifier plus Beatty standard once again and then I will instead of clearing it I will save it to a new default and in the help file it explains where that default is saved and now that data I and mean, we click on S21 is the data that we saw previously it's the amplifier Beatty standard with the gain and now I'll restart it again speed this up a little bit And we can see it's retained that same user data. We look at the S21, it's the same gain we had before. So now we've replaced the factory user default information with a user default information. If we want, we can clear that away with the macro function. And if we do clear that away, then it'll return back to the factory default data. 
All right, so we've now not only read in an S2P file, we've replaced the default data with our own data, and also you got a bonus topic of seeing how you can use that default data plus a uh, saved S2P file to do some de-embedding and fool around with your device that way. Uh, hopefully in another future video I'll show you how to generate something in ADS, a simulator, save that as an S2P file, and then you can load that in and we'll do some manipulations on that. Uh, until next time.